Good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday, November 9th, and um, I'm still half asleep. Really wanted to sleep in today, but I got up, and uh, so we're here. Um, before we get started, just a reminder that today is um, maintenance day. Um, let me put out my tweet real quick, and then I'll pull up the schedule. Um, it's to start at 4 a.m. PST, which is 1 p.m. CET, um, and whatever time that is for where you are specifically. Um, the downtime is to last approximately 2 hours and 50 minutes. Now, from what I understand, um, they already have the um, update notes, the patch notes on uh, the forums. So you should be able to look that up um, in the game updates section and uh, in whatever language, uh, German, French, or whatever that it happens to be that you need. Um, I do believe this uh, today's is going to include, um, most importantly, the cross-faction goodies, uh, which includes cross-faction housing so that you can neighbor um, some of your fellow um, uh, op opposing faction uh, buddies. Um, if your plot is public, that means anybody can come, including um, cross-faction visitors. Uh, I just hope that that fact does not encourage folks to close up their plots to private, um, because currently I don't think there's a way to like switch it to like faction-only visitors. I think if you want to restrict your visitors to a specific group set, you have to just close it off to private and then just invite people as your neighbors. Um, I think that's the only way to do it. So I'm a little concerned about especially those RP plots that are currently being used as maybe uh, Chuba Hangouts or Orin uh, uh, Sanctuaries or whatever that they're going to um, end up closing their doors to public visitors um, in favor of keeping it to either just their guild or just their friends or you know exclusively invited uh, individuals. Um, I think that will be a problem if that's going to be the trend. Um, I'm not saying that that's what people are saying that they're going to do, but I, I kind of have that in the back of my mind as a worry because uh, again we have somewhat limited control over how um, visitation goes as far as who we allow in and out. Um, it's either all or nothing kind of thing. Um, because uh, even if we restrict it just neighbors only and just start inviting every exile as our neighbor, um, you're limited to how many neighbors you can have. So it's not like you can set it up for the whole, you know, your whole faction as your neighbor. So I don't know. It's going to be one of those things that we're going to have to see how it, it rolls out. Uh, maybe later they will give us a way to shut it off to you know, faction specific visitors so that we can keep those plots public. Um, but again, I, I have no idea how this is really going to affect. I know <clears throat> a lot of people have been looking forward to it, been asking for it, um, but uh, I just don't know how it's going to turn out. Uh, good morning, Poi, and uh, thank you for the hosting, uh, Bones and Gamer. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just one of those things that, um, you know, it's it's not just the housing that's becoming cross-faction, obviously. It's going to be a lot of other um, facets of the game, especially I think what folks are looking forward to is uh, the grouping up for like raiding and uh, dungeoning, that being a little open and more uh, quickly for the queues to pop and everything. Um, but when it comes to housing, I do have my concerns. Uh, I haven't heard anybody really talking about theirs, so maybe I'm just kind of overreacting or worrying too much. But um, it, you know, it's just questions that popped into my head, and and uh, I just don't know how it's going to play out. But I hope that folks will continue to leave their plots open regardless of who decides to come visit. Um, so yeah, because uh, if everybody starts closing their doors, then that just makes our our uh, chances of being able to see all of, all of their beautiful beautiful work less likely. Excuse me, kind of got like some 
think I swallowed a dust bunny or something. Okay, so um, we are on exile side. I just decided to start there. We have more uh, in that queue than on the other side. It's nothing personal. Um, and we'll just get back into the rhythm, uh, at least for this month. Uh, next month, I am uh, hoping to do more uh, winter plot tours. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But um, for now, for the time being, I think we'll go back to our usual alternating between the factions. And we're just going to start with uh, e uh, Exiles. Um, we are on the plot of Ill Ill. It's I-L-L-I-L-L. -L -I -L -L. Um, and it is called Maniac Mansion. And I fondly refer to it as the Skittles plot because it is so colorful. Um, you can see here how colorful it is. There's just a lot of um, pinks and blues and yellows and, and just it's a very pretty, pretty plot. Um, they actually contacted me in game to let me know that they had finished it and that it was open for viewing. And uh, so I appreciate that. Um, it's always good to get a heads up on that kind of thing. And uh, so we're here today to take a look. Um, mostly the, the biggest feature of this is not just the use of certain decor to achieve a, a look, but um, the landscaping um, is probably its biggest plus. Um, it's something I'm not very good at, so I am always uh, delighted to see a plot that applies it in a very unique and uh, creative way and uh, wish that I could do the same. <laughs> Mine are usually just typically flat. I might give a little hill here and there, but nothing super elaborate. But you can see this one, they've really gone above and beyond on their landscaping here. So most of the plot, uh, I think, uh, from what I recall from my last visit, was it is entirely encased in uh, the exonite walls. Um, just kind of blocks it off, makes it feel like a like a, a canyon, a, a, an enclosure of some kind. And you can see that most of the uh, the raised parts are also trimmed in the exonite walls. Um, there's a lot of the uh, mangrove trees. Um, there's even the exonite trees. It gives it that nice, uh, lovely glow here and there. Um, a lot of overgrowth, uh, you're going to see that used as, uh, you know, with the upside down uh, snowy hills, it actually copies whatever ground you have um, on the main surface of your plot. But it looks to me they've just decided to cover up the entire thing and then create their own grass type areas using the overgrowth. And you'll see what I mean as we get a, a little more into it. But um, for the for the ground, they've used the frozen lakes. They've just put it in. Now it looks like they might have, um, I can't tell if they've layered in rocks here. It kind of looks like it, um, just directly underneath. And of course, the waterfall is made of the glacier pieces, um, the spikes and everything. Using the older waterfalls here, I think, um, I think it's all older style waterfalls in this particular plot. Um, typically, if they've already set it up for those kind of waterfalls and they want to switch it to the other ones, they'd have to really literally rework it all. So I think those that started with the, the first iteration of the waterfalls have just left them that way. Um, it's not that it's a bad thing, but there's probably effects that they probably would have preferred if they could have used the newer ones. But you can see how there's multiples of these uh, glacier spikes and such. Um, that make up this waterfall feature. And uh, then the frozen lakes for most of the, the groundwork. And then if you look at, let's see if we can get up here. For most of the ground cover on these raised elevated parts, it's just lots and lots of the green of overgrowth, the, the first one, not the mossy version, but the regular one. So you get a lot of lumpy, bumpy uh, action going on with uh, 
going over the little lumps of it. Um, they've accented it here and there with uh, exonite um, pillar pieces for like steps. You'll see they even use some of the Arctera bushes, the frozen, um, uh, I guess it's called uh, bramble weed or whatever, brambles. Um, because again, they're playing with the same colors. They're keeping to those pastels um, and did a really nice job. It looks great. Uh, notice that with the waterfalls, they've kept that theme running through using the, um, the glacier pieces for that waterfall feature. It helps bring out that blue. Just imagine how many pieces all of this is, because I mean, those are all walls here, just for this elevated section. If I can get my camera to quit zooming into the grass. You can see there is a snowy hill stuck up here. Um, they've just trimmed it with, again, overgrowth. They probably could have uh, slapped on some stones if you don't want the white showing, but I don't think it bothered them. They just wanted to make sure the trim, the edges were covered up. A few statues here and there. They've got uh, a few Elden elements. Uh, there's some, uh, well, there's this uh, bit here. There's another statue here. You'll see some other things um, elsewhere along the plot. Again, a lot of use of the glacier pieces. Instead of using some of the gray stones, they just stuck, stuck with the blue primarily. Snow-covered rocks, things like that to keep with that blue. And again, good use of the waterfalls, even as they are. It looks really nice. As you can see, there's the entrance there. Yeah, it's very bright, colorful. It just tells you that you can make your plot any palette you want. Um, we have a pretty good variety of decor, and this is a good way of showing how even um, decor you might not necessarily think go well together, uh, how you can make it work. Uh, like I said, there's a little bit of um, the frozen stuff from the glaciers to the um, frosty bushes. But there's also a lot of uh, what you consider maybe uh, orony type trees, a lot of the mangroves, um, and of course the exonite spotted all throughout. It just looks really pretty. There's another statue up there. They've got the effects of, I want to say it's the, um, oh, the target dummies. I think they have that weird um, animation that is around them. I think that's where that's coming from. And of course, a good use of the rainbow. It fits perfectly in this particular scene. For those that have not seen that before. They do have little bits of small pool water features. Um, I think it's just the bowl, the regular green bowl um, in the middle. And then um, I want to say it's the file, the tall file that's given this, this nice, bright, shiny blue. And then again, using that uh, animation from, I want to say it's the, the target dummies, putting them down inside there to give that animation little sparkly bits coming out. I imagine that uh, they kept it to just focusing on the um, the landscaping itself without really going into too much detail with like um, NPCs and little like uh, buildings and things like that because just imagine how many pieces this took to fill in with all of that overgrowth. Um, I suspect they probably just ran out of room and just decided to leave it like this, which is really nice. Uh, this would be great for like a little adventuring team that just doesn't, you know, it, it takes place out just in the wild and not very um, related to civilization or anything. Because like I said, there's like absolutely no, not many signs. I think the only bits are some of these Elden pieces like this, uh, 
a little um, platform over here. That's about the only thing that has, that looks like there's been somebody here. Let's see if I can get up there. Again, you got another pool. Yeah, it's like just this. And you've got this lovely view. But I can imagine if someone did this on a smaller scale, uh, maybe uh, that you know you could easily add some orany homes or little Elden huts. I don't know what they would have, but you can see there's just all sorts here. But my my biggest thing is oh, here's a giant worm thing. <laughs> Uh, my biggest thing is I love just the layered, the 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 multi-level that's going on here. There's another waterfall. I think the entrance is around the corner over there. So we're just kind of going around. Again, great use of the uh, glacier pieces and snow-covered rocks and things. A little bit of strain popping up over here. Hey, Bones, good morning. Glad you could join. Great place for a picnic. Again, just, you know, look at all the, the layers, though. Just the different elevations here. It's just crazy. So you can see they use the um, the upside down snow snowy bits, but they chose to cover it up with... Uh, or it could be upside down, massive umbrella trees. That's a little bit more expensive, but still a possibility. So now there's the entrance. We've just kind of made a big round circle of it. Now for this part here, I don't know if they... Uh, if this had been slightly over to the side, I would have uh, pictured this as maybe like this is the hole that was left by that chunk getting floated up there. But it's a little off, so I don't know if this is supposed to be like a lava pool or what. Um, I suspect, again, it's... Um, I don't think this is the a bowl. I think it's just a giant uh, exonite uh, pillar. And then inserted into it is, I guess, the bottom of one of the bottles. That's the only kind of orangey, fiery color that I can think of that has that. Um, but it, yeah, it kind of looks like a, a lava pit to me, since the bluer ones are to represent like pools of water. This is what this looks like to me. Now there is an underground area, so all of this raised bit. Um, you can, uh, yeah, Maddie, I was just getting to that, but thank you for reminding, and uh, glad you could join us. Um, it is in like a maze of um, roots, and uh, there's signs of strain. You got all these little eyeballs here. Lots of pulsating bits of um, strain. They're using some of the uh, jaw bones, I think. But you can see all of the roots. And yes, you can see that it's snow underneath here too, but... Little drops of flowers and things underneath some of the glowy exonite trees where the roots are. Same way here. But there's just, it's all interconnected down here. I kind of got lost the first time I come in. 
I really don't know if there's anything super significant that we're supposed to look at. I know there's in one location I saw some arrows that would like point you in a specific direction, but you can just see that it's just all intermingled here. Like at some of the strain eggs, there's a little bit of exonite, uh, not exonite, um, Elden relics down here as well, just traces of it. Trying to find one of those arrows because I know they're down here. There's a couple of stalks looking at us. Uh, let's go this way. I have no idea if I'm going in circles here or not. I have a feeling I am. Yeah, I think that's the two flower pots. This <clears throat> it's pretty disgusting down here with all the eyeballs. Okay, well, we've seen that part. Ah, I think I see an arrow. There we go. No, it's telling me to go back the way I came. Like here, you'll find this. I know there's some um, taurine bits that you can come across as well. Um, they got some of the taurine floaty statues. Maybe it's through here. Yeah, there we go. Some of the taurine stuff. There's just all sorts of things down here. I don't know what all, you know, maybe there's a story behind it. Maybe it's an Elden uh, facility that was just destroyed. And then all of this green uh, Skittles land grew over it or something. I have no idea. Still didn't get into detail on that. Just said, hey, my plot's done. You can come look at it. So we're here. Another little deposit of flowers. Might be the same ones, but from the other side, I, I can't tell. There's another one. That actually has a statue in it. Yeah. Uh, nice wiggling mass of ores. There's probably lots of little Easter egg thingies in here, and I'm just not good at finding all of them. But that gives you a reason to come visit, to take a look at it for yourself, to see what I may have missed that you can find. So I'm going to quickly repop to the front. And. Uh, so that's from the one uh, waterfall on the right side. Uh, this one here, I think. I didn't find any other little nooks and crannies that you might can go through, even though I tried to run into them. The only other thing is the bunker house, which you can access through this little hole here. And carrying on with the colorful Skittles theme, you have this little bit of a maze I think it is um, it's kind of hard to see where the walls and such are because they're using glass of course um, to kind of block you off here and there 
There's um, the uh, colored panels that look like walls, but you can actually walk through them. Um, so you just kind of have to find your way around uh, to see if you can make your way around. And I guess the end prize is to get to the caretaker uh, piece. I honestly don't know. I certainly don't want to spend all day in, inside this thing, that's for sure. But as you can see, it's something that you can come work, work on on your own time, figure out how to get to the to the other side, I guess. Uh, that just come through there. It's, you see, it's really hard to tell. Some of the panels are blocked off, some aren't. So see, I was blocked here, but not here. So it's just kind of a hit and miss for me. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it there. Uh, I think I'm just going back the way I came, or it feels that way at least. I'm, I'm like under the heart now, whatever that is, so I'll collect it. There we go. <laughs> That's about as good as it's going to get. But it's a bit of a challenge. It's certainly, you could probably spend all day in here and who knows if you get to the prize or not. Uh, I certainly am horrible at these things, so that's probably one of the reasons why I don't normally showcase lots that have them because I find them very stressful and annoying. But anyway, that's Ill Ill's Maniac Mansion. It's probably a suitable name considering this maze down here. But it's certainly one use for the Tetris, or I should say Retros blocks, um, if you happen to have a lot of them on hand. It's a little bit too um, colorful for my taste. I wouldn't be able to stand spending too much time down in here, especially having to build it. I think I would have gotten cross-eyed trying to put it together. So the next plot is probably one familiar to some of you. This is Alora Northern Light, a.k.a. Cheeky. Um, Cheeky informed me that uh, they don't they're not really playing too much anymore, and it doesn't look like they're going to be finishing this plot um, anytime soon, if at all. So they welcomed uh, us to come and visit. Uh, it's a shame because I'm sure you'll uh, agree that once you have a look around with what's already there, you'll probably be wishing they would. But it's probably a combination of just decor um, issues and you know space and just maybe having a struggle with ideas, uh, perhaps. Um, but like with a lot of folks, um, you know, they get burnt out on the game, um, whether it be this one or whatever other one that they might be playing. Um, it happens, um, you know, nothing wrong with taking a break, you know, stepping away from it, because especially it's probably good that you do that um, from time to time because uh, then you can come back at it with fresh eyes, fresh ideas. Uh, maybe you return to an old project or maybe just scrap it and start something new. It, it just helps shake things up a little bit. So right off the bat, this is the entrance area. You can see that they've uh, used the, um, the gray stone to cover up the most of the uh, teleport pad. 
um, and then just loaded it with obsidian stone to encase it into this little cave-like area. Um, it's, I'm sure it took a lot of time, a lot of tinkering with it to get it just right. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that there are some steps around here. But just like blocking this in, that was several pieces, just this little piece, you know, this little area here. You have um, the stairway and then you have the exit from the entrance area. But we're going to go up the stairs. Again, all of this is obsidian stones for the stairs, for the walls, for all of this. Uh, I think most of it is just the stepping blocks, but there are um, some of the, uh, the one that looks like a donut, a rock donut. Um, the one that has the, the hole in the middle that you can't go through no matter how many how big you make it. Um, but here you have some of the winding rivers being used as a water feature inside this little cave area. So they've got this little like a pillar bit. Added a little bit of mossy overgrowth just to kind of throw in some color. Some idea that, you know, there's a lot of gathering of water and condensation and it leads to a little bit of growth of greenery in, inside this lump of rock. You keep going up the steps again. Look at all those steps. It's just lots and lots of stones. And you come out onto this little overlook, this little balcony type of thing. This is all above um, the entrance. So using uh, the snowy, uh, upside down snowy hills, that's what gives you all of this. Now notice you may be able to see, I don't know how well you can see it on the screen, but there are like these little lines. That just shows you that it's more than one snowy hill that's here because you can clearly see uh, Tiki went for a specific shape to this little overlook. And in order to achieve that shape, um, it's not like you can choose the shape that your hill comes in. It's got its own odd shape. So they had to use several, and that's why you see these little overlapping layers, because they've used multiples to get this to fit like they want. That's the only downside to using you know, several of them together. There's always that line. No matter how accurately placed you make it, smooth and everything, um, those little lines show up. I had the same issue on uh, one of the plots that I started using them. It was just, it's a minor thing, but it's still noticeable uh, and irksome for someone like me that wants it all be green and smooth and no lines. But I like the use of the little, um, the cave decor that we get uh, being used as like the little outing for this outcropping here. Notice again they used a little bit of the snowy hill here to add a little bit of green and threw in some flowers. Um, but this gives you a great overview of the plot itself. Again most of the um, mountainous rocky features are all obsidian stone uh, with some of those um, I guess it's the crystal formations the ones with the sparkles, you'll see them snap every now and then. Um, not the buoyant blue crystal because that one actually has animation to it. It moves. This is just those formations. That it comes in like purple and blue and they pick the, per, uh, the blue one to go into this one. Again, notice how those the obsidian donuts are being used for the railing here. So just lots and lots of those to go along the edges. And you can see there's plenty of water features. Um, again, they're using a certain kind of color palette for the trees, mostly yellow down in the valley with a few touches of color along the edges. I think it's the, the deciduous trees. I don't remember if those are the ones that cost like 25000 off of the housing vendor or if it's the ones from, uh, I think Walder Run has a few, the golden deciduous, I think. But notice how the stones are all turned in different ways, kind of to resemble mountains, but 
turned this way and that, not too repetitive to give it a more natural feel. And I love how the, the crystals are kind of embedded inside them so it looks like part of it. And of course the sparkles have a nice little touch to it. You also see that most of the waterfalls are the old version. Um, I think again it was uh, a matter of if they use the newer ones, they'd have to rebuild how things are put together. And I think it would have been much more work if they had switched it. So let's go back down inside. I'll try and not land on the teleport pad, otherwise I end up back in town. So we took the stairs up, now we're going to go down into the exit here and that leads you to the valley itself. You can see um, Cheeky went through a lot of trouble with all of the stones for not only the path but the bridge and all of the trim for all of the waterways um, all trimmed in stone. Now these I think are just um, uh, regular stones that they individually place the same way with the bridge but I think the ones that are trimming the edge of the water I think those are upside down um, uh, makeshift bulletin board that's what it looks like to me anyway you can see how they've added a little bit of a hole over here um, it's either a maintenance platform or a graded floor panel, or it could be, um, uh, I've seen people use the cellar entrance. I don't think that's what this is, the cellar entrance, um, mostly because uh, the cellar entrance has that, that white brick that you have to hide. And this doesn't look very deep, so I suspect it's either a platform or a graded floor panel for that dark color. Uh, That would be my guess anyway. Hey Faye, good morning. But you can see they've actually, again, if you're using these um, snowy hills or if you're keeping the clutter off, um, it helps to kind of dress up the ground with its own uh, foliage, you know, flowers, grasses, whatever. Um, here you can tell it's the snowy hills because of the white puffs coming out. So they've populated part of it with the white um, weeping cup flower patches and thrown in some of the blood grass just for a little pop of color here and there. That razor blood grass, I don't know what it's called specifically, but it's something like that. And of course, um, Cheeky's used a lot of the new um, creature NPCs. Uh, we saw one of the uh, one of the buzz bings up above on the uh, overlook. Um, here's another one down here along with the steam gliders and one of the little alien scruggy things or whatever you call them. <coughs> one nice thing about the uh, using the stones from the makeshift bulletin board it looks like you're just using a lot of stones, but it's really just little sections. But like this is probably one, this is one, this is one. So there's still a lot of pieces there, but being able to use um, an item that has multiple stones already built in helps save a little bit other than, you know, rather than having to put all of those individual blocks in, that would be crazy. Um, but lovely bridge made out of stone. And most of the time we go for lots of details like railings and things like that. This looks nice and simple. It suits this particular plot perfectly. So very nice on that. We continue following the path again. You'll see patches of flowers, um, not just the weeping cups, um, but also some of the new um, spring decor, um, even grass patches that were used to kind of line the fences. Lots of little buzz bings here and there, again, just to kind of help populate without overpopulating. And I love this little entrance to the house. Um, the house itself is the standard one. Of course, they've added embellishment to it, like um, the entrance. 
typically there's, a, I think, a bit of a bridge here, and they've just covered it with not only a um, snowy hill to make the slope, but added in the stones to create a bit of a path. Now this little pond or pool here, that's an upside down one of the new waterfalls um, because it has that nice watery animation. Um, it's really bluish and you can step right through it. They've lined the bottom with stones and add a little lily leaf there. But how adorbs is that? I think that's the only new um, waterfall on the exterior that I think they've used more of them inside. Um, other embellishments for the house besides the flowers and such, some of these little bits is um, overgrowth with the canary flowers thrown in. There's a little bit of the purple bits, some more of that um, blood grass. But notice on the house itself, they blind a lot of it with the um, teal flowers and little spots of pink from the tall finger flowers. Think about how many pieces used for that. It's just crazy. I used it for my uh, tangled tower, trying to make it look like ivy growing up the tower, and it was a nightmare, and I can just imagine the trouble this was. That's one way of personalizing your standard prefab home is by adding some kind of lovely little elements like that. But I really, really love this, this part here. This is, it looks very natural, um, like it came that way when it really didn't. Okay, if you follow the path over here, I'm not sure what they intended for this. Maybe um, a little gazebo that they were thinking about adding uh, of some kind. But you can see the platform is a, a beginning. It's basically just two of the tree tables um, stacked together. Um, notice the stones. Um, some of these are the swirly rocks that are just oversized and put out here. They've added at overgrowth. And these little um, bits are actually the flowers in a vase, the white vase, um, and they've just inserted it so you don't see the vase. It's a really quick way of adding um, little plants, uh, like a flower bed or little additions like this, without having to put the individual flowers. Uh, we have the snow flowers and the purple um, uh, bits that you could individually add, but it's just cheaper decor-wise to use the vase because it's got all of the elements in there and you stuck it, stick it in and you're good to go. So here's a view from this side. Again, you can see just about everything from all angles. Again, you know, sometimes less is more. While we have all of these snowy hills and there's hardly any um, uh, grass or flowers, They've spotted it enough where it looks, um, again, it's organic looking. It doesn't look, you know, well, there's this uniform patch here and this uniform patch here. Some of them are round. Some of them are little triangles. This one kind of follows the stone. Um, it's really nice. And they didn't do it around everything. You know, it's not like every tree had to have some flowers with it. Here's another example of a good placement for the rainbow over the waterfall area here. Now this looks a little bit more overgrown. They've put some grasses and tall clumps uh, of grass here. A little less kempt. Um, for the sparklies, you can see the uh, buoyant blue crystals being used here for that, like, I don't know, a sprite um, kind of animation that goes with it, like will-o'-wisps or something. There's another one of those stone bridges. Again, they're following with the theme, keeping it together.
some of this you can see we don't have the white puffs again that's indication that these are some of the protostar insta hills in places to give extra elevation like right here i think it switches yeah it goes back to the snowy hills so they've done a really great job of blending the two together to create the shapes of the land that they wanted i love this little outcropping here from the second waterfall hey cheeky good morning <laughs> just in time we're looking at your place um, but here's this uh, obsidian stone outcropping it gives an excuse for that breakup of the two and then it goes back into a single Yeah, I was just telling them that we hope that you someday decide to come back and, and finish this place. Is it because you just kind of ran out of decor space um, in a way, or is it just you've run out of ideas or just not too inspired right now? Look at all the flower patches for this. <clears throat> and the flower patches are kind of big, but to keep them all uniform size and to fill a, an area like this, there's quite a few there. I can promise I used those for trees at one point and it was, again, it was another nightmare of how many. Notice all of the waterways are lined with rock as well. You know, a lot of us will make a waterway and we'll leave the grass look underneath and it doesn't quite look right, but it's easier. But they took the time to line all of it with the stone. 700 to go outside. Uh, what was um, what was the intention for the uh, the tree tables out here? This here, I, I guess that it might have been like a site for a gazebo or something. But uh, did you have any plans for it specific that you just didn't get around to? A dancing stage, a meeting hall. Maybe an outdoor grilling diner thing? I don't know. <coughs> Maybe you're going to put a big um, statue there or something. Are you maxed on the inside? Gazebo. Yay, I was right. <clears throat> the only reason I guessed it was because that's probably what I would have tried to put here. <laughs> Nice little gazebo. Oh, excuse me. Got a little bit of a urge to sneeze. So the outside is lovely as it is. And again, my favorite part is probably this right here. Um, there's still more to see on the inside. And you'll see that they kind of carried through with the theme of all naturey. Um, there's a lot of like little indoor gardeny type elements. Um, most of these little curved uh, ground bits are uh, used. Uh, they're using um, the curved walls and domes, a combination thereof, uh, and cylinders to make um, these curved parts. Spring decor vines. Oh, uh, the ones that they put on the white fences. Yeah, that would be pretty cool for a gazebo type of thing. Definitely. You can do it. Oh, pardon me. You can see though that they started putting in some flowers and bushes and stuff here. So you can just imagine how colorful this could get. How full on. But it's the uh, the Draken uh, walls for the the ground, um, and uh, for like the steps, um, those are the overgrowth. Again, you'll see that carried out throughout the the interior for the steps. Um, this floor here, if I remember right, are the oversized leafy stalks. It's the same thing I used for um, the eye 
uh, painting that we were working on. Um, it's just a couple of them laid out. I think a smaller one for this area and then a bigger one for that one. Um, for the kitchen, um, again, they're partly using the, you know, multiple layers of this curved wall to uh, be part of the counter. And then they've just inserted the tiki, um, the tiki bar inside there because it's handy. It comes with the, its own little kind of like an inset area. To box it in, they've used the portraits. So that's what this back of this wood is here and all along here. All of this trim is that portrait. I forget which one. It's one of the painting things. Um, the cabinets, the doors and drawers, those are the uh, the orange like coffee table looking thing. Um, and then uh, it looks like um, I want to say it's the the pointy pillar, the pointy oran pillar for the the knobs. Uh, it's the only purpley thing I can think of. Of course, the sink is an inset. It's the actual sink, I think, and it's just hidden so that you just see the faucet and the knobs. And then uh, Cheeky used a water trough for the actual sink part. Um, the cutting board, I think, is the, it's either the ear or the tongue, um, it's the only oval things I can think of, the, the mounted draken tongue, I want to say, I could be wrong on that, but it's the only oval, like, little wooden thing I can think of that off the top of my head, I'm just using the back of that, um, uh, other good ones for that is, like, the, uh, some of the portraits, uh, some of the like platter uh, pieces, but the the Drake and Mountain ones, I think they're the only oval ones that pop into my brain. Um, for the stove top, that's uh, the graded floor panels upside down. Looks like maybe um, one of the tanks and a bowl or plate for the burners. All right, Bones. Thanks for uh, dropping by and have a good day at work. Back of it has a bit of blood. Oh. <laughs> that's probably, I guess that's uh, where, who was it that had the, oh, the guy that was on the ground and he was squished. I guess that's where they got the blood. But yeah, that's pretty gross. So it is the drinking thing. Yeah, I can see it here better. A little bit of blood it's nasty um, the smoke effect um, it looks to be just one of the new pillars of white smoke um, particle effect that you can get from the shop um, for those that maybe can't get a hold of it and happen to have some of the uh, the flares I'm sure that could be used it's just you might have the problem with the flare light actually showing up um, but the oven part, it looks like um, the uh, Osun uh, graded floor panels for that chicken wire look. And then um, uh, looks like uh, travel posters to line the stove with a glass panel to cover it. Again, all that shelving is that pretty... pretty um, wood from the back of one of the portraits, the paintings, is either the tree or something, I, I don't really remember. What's used for the, the refrigerator? I'm trying to think what has that yellow stripe. It's really shiny. I want to say it's the back of one of the, it's not the, um, like the, uh, vigilant priest portraits and stuff because they have a, a funny metal background. Um, the handles look to be what are those? Is that that gold um, chest? The handles on that? 
Yeah, these pieces I don't recognize too well. That looks to be a travel poster with a couple of the detonators, um, just the little blinky bit on the antenna for the lights. Um, this here looks to be the top of the, uh, is it the orange cart? It's the same thing, uh, I think it was Zodi that used it for a tennis ball. Oh, the, um, the justice window, the stained glass, is that what that is? Wow. I guess it's multiples of that because um, from both sides that would be the same picture but I guess you're using the edges or in vendor okay so that's why these show up <laughs> that makes sense I was pretending these were like towel racks or something but that that makes sense <clears throat> of course, um, the platforms, the little elevated areas here, you'll see that it kind of looks like trees. Um, I think it's the tree tables that are upside down um, and topped, the roots are topped with the um, orange colorful windows, and it just looks really cute. It looks like little little trees. You could probably easily change that to make it look like shrooms if you decide you want to have a shroomy place. But I think the idea is very lovely. And it keeps with the theme of it all being out in nature. Um, the floor mat here for the dining table is one of the, I think it's the Cassian candle firework. Uh, the table itself is um, the tree table as the main part and then it's um, trimmed with the carrot rug uh, very cutely done it looks almost like a doily that you would lay on the, the countertop or something very cute and colorful though again the staircase is all overgrowth so you come up to this one here, and that's just a little pillow pile that you can come and sit. Up here is a little place where you could show off your plushie collection, a little collectibles of some of the things you've... Again, it's a good place for if you don't have something that exactly fits the theme, like here you have this full-on nature plot, and then you've got these little, you know, spaceships. You don't want to put them onto the... The pretty plot so this is a good way to kind of display them just various collectibles that you find important again this shelving is all of those um the posters you can see it right there it looks like the tree one landscape or something the pretty wood it's uh doesn't match everything but this particular one it works really nice again overgrowth for even the um the railing and then they've added in the canary flowers to throw in some color. It just kind of differentiates it between the stairs being the same material. It helps throw that a little different. <clears throat> Bookshelf display. That sounds good. Um, here we have kind of like a living room area. I love this little fireplace setup. I'm using the same pictures that are being used for all of this wood trim. Um, they've made it so that you can actually see the, the, the tree itself. Added some glass for the shelves. Um, cylinders and such for the fireplace. A little bit of curved glass and then the small campfire inserted in there very cozy looking the couch of course is made out of some of the summer uh, decor pack the beach towels the folded version for the couch very lovely build of that I like that And of course the rope bridge thrown in to join the two outcroppings here. It's a good use of space. You know, I know a lot of people 
uh, fussed about the Orin home and like the cozier versions of some of the houses because they're round and a lot of people just didn't know how to handle the round type of room and this is just a good example of how you can still make it work for you if you just kind of go with those shapes again keeping with the round elements the curves I mean again a lot of people found this little raised elevated area strange and it just works really nicely as you know a section for the kitchen and leaving this all open so now outside we didn't see too much of the newer waterfalls just that one part right in front of the house but this is where they decided to put the newer ones um, if i recall they weren't here originally, so I imagine there's been some rework done here to get them to work properly. But you can see how they've been layered in to not only be the source of the water, but just to go all the way down. Now this is that hallway, and a lot of people just kind of leave this place empty or they kind of line it with trophies or something. And this is an example of how you can just really go crazy with it bring a, a little bit of the nature in again they've kept with that um the, the forest uh wallpaper so they've added in a lot of the um willow trees to give that overhang look and uh this nice lovely staircase is made out of the stones trailed it with candles and you just got that lovely waterfall stuff coming down it's really pretty And then a few drains to explain where the water goes. I don't know if it's just kind of a cycle thing or what. Yeah, if I remember right, there was a lot more stones, I think. And you just, it, it works however well you did it. It works great. I thought it looked great before, but it, it looks just as great, if not greater now. So you did a good job on the change up. So here we have the lower room, the little side room. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a lot of people complain about it, about it being such a pain. I, again, it's one of those things people ask for it, ask for it, ask for it, and then when they get it, it's like, ugh, it's not quite what I was expecting. Um, I think those that are starting to build plots based strictly around the newer waterfalls will probably have an easier time than those that had the older ones previously and having to rework it to fit the new ones in. So um, this area uh, is a little bit more clearly unfinished. Um, if we go up at the top especially, it's just pretty blank. I don't know what's intended for here. Um, bedroom areas maybe. Um, so maybe some bunk beds or sleeping spaces or, or whatever but look at the wall look how many stones are being these are like individual stones that they've put in and they've spotted it with overgrowth they've got the overgrowth railing that matches the one upstairs with all of the canary flowers in there are you like close to the limit i suspect Oh, like a flower, or like an indoor garden. Well, that'd be nice. Very colorful, too. Um, the painting, we're not going to stay on that too much. It's something I made for Cheeky. Um, it was, I think it was part of our 50th um, house tours episode giveaway. I was giving away a lot of uh, paintings and things, and that was, uh, something that Cheeky won. I'm not sure what this was. I want to say it was part of an old bathroom build, but maybe it's a food bowl or it's going to be a drain or I don't know what it is. Uh, here's the bedroom. That's part of it. The uh, Again, it's the tree table with one of the Orin windows on top to give it a solid, more solid look without all that color. Um, the door trim is the Cassian candles again, the fireworks, and of course the wood is those paintings. It also encases the cabinet here, 
and then using similar build as like the kitchen or the closet part. I love this bathroom. <laughs> Um, the back part of the uh, the sink area is, again, Cassian candles that has that beautiful honeycomb pattern. Um, outside, 1642 out of 25. Inside, 17. Well, you still got a little bit of wiggle room. A little bit. Um, the cabinet itself is the Oren table. Several of those for the, uh, the cabinets here, and then it's just boxed in with the, that nice, lovely wood. Um, you've got a hair comb here. Uh, it's one of those clips that has a bow on it, and it, they're using, I think it's the rib cage, one of the Arctera bones uh, for the little clamp part. Um, one of the pillars, the Oren pillars, being used for the sink. I think that's pretty clever. I never even thought of that as a faucet, but that's that works perfectly. Um, with the uh, orange window as the sink bowl. Uh, bananas for the trim on the mirror. And I want to say it's probably a metal plate or something for the mirror itself. For the paper, the, the toilet paper holder. Um, which I haven't seen anybody actually make one of these. I think it's the first time I've seen someone do that. Um, I actually made one in real life for my mother-in-law. Um, it was green though, but this one is Cassian candles for both the bottom and the little, like little pole part that you put the, the toilet paper on. Uh, the toilet bowl itself is, um, it looks like, uh, I wanna, is that like one of the rolled, um, beach towels for the bottom and then uh, some uh, orange windows for the lid and then the tables, the orange tables for the back. I'm not sure about the bottom here though. What is that? Sink is done. I'm assuming it's probably mostly missing the water and the faucet handles. Water could be uh, you could use the uh, upside down frost spore that'll give a little bit of motion. You could use the blue um, file upside down for that. Ah, so this is the upside down umbrella from beach decor. Two of them. Okay. I never really looked at it up close. I have a set of that decor, but it's on another character that I haven't actually learned it. I didn't put it in the crate yet. Again, I've been kind of hesitant about using it. So the tub is just the line of stones with one of the new waterfalls coming out of the little water source here. It's basically some um, purple rock arches uh, being used to make this little bit and then either a maintenance platform or some such to make that little black hole coming out. But it works really good for the pool. I imagine this one is an upside down one. And that's just a tiny one sitting there. How cool is that? Who wouldn't want a bathroom like this? You should be. It's again, it's just another example of, you know, I assume you're talking about, <laughs> about the toilet. But again, how many toilets have we seen on the stream? <laughs> You know, and all the the videos that we've had of houses, and no two look alike unless they're just using the standard toilet that comes in the game. It's the only way they look the same. Yeah, awesome build. I hope one day you get to finishing it, and if you do, let us know. I'll come back for another look. But I love this, all the detail, the attention to the detail, and. The idea is a lot of the combinations of items is just interesting. The stone path looks so pretty too, but 
so many of us don't want to take the time to make that silly path. So many pieces. Thank you for the host, Dane. I appreciate it. Okay, so the final house today is a little bit unusual. Um, I mean, sort of. Uh, it's uh, Nastya uh, Kevakov, I think is how you pronounce it. And it's called Mordesh Solitude. Uh, I think I was drawn to it firstly by the name. Um, we don't have a lot of Mordesh themed homes out there, mostly because I think people are waiting for to see what Carbine uh, provides us as a standard uh, prefab home first and then they kind of you know would be able to fashion you, you their own ideas uh, so many of players when they talk about mordash homes they're always either slabs or they're thinking like graveyard uh, they think of the mordash as almost like zombies of some kind um and i never really pictured it that way i've always pictured more victorian kind of style um, but this is a, a take on a Mordesh home, and it's not completely done, I don't think. Um, I know for a fact the interior of the prefab home that's there, um, it's indicated by the bar sign out here. Um, it's completely empty, I think. Um, so this will be one of those houses that if they do end up finishing up, um, especially the interior of the main home, We'll definitely be coming back for a visit because I'm anxious to see how they they work it. Um, but I just there's so many ideas here that I think it's too um, too good to pass up for the time being. So I'm hoping you guys will have fun taking a look at this. So you can see they're using the ominous sky um, for not only the mood lighting um, but uh, it just has that kind of gloomy color. I think a lot of um, Players, again, associate gloominess and, and uh, drabby colors with the Mordesh race. So uh, it almost has a not quite um, a full-on uh, Shades Eve kind of feel, but there's a lot of those elements like this, uh, the weeping fountain here. It's, you don't actually see the whole fountain, just that topper part, but um, it has that creepy melancholy look uh, of it. You can see that they've been incorporating some of the newer um, waterfalls for some of their features, but you can see they've also got some of the older ones still in place. I don't know if the plan is that they're slowly switching them out um, or if they're just going to leave a combination of both. I think it works both ways. Um, you can see too that um, they've used some uh, some of the, it's either, I, I want to say it's a snowy hill. It's kind of hard to tell because of the coloring. The white doesn't look white anymore, but I think that snow puffs coming up as I walk. So I assume this is again, another snowy hill uh, type of feature. Plus the fact that it's pretty large. Um, then when the puffs of smoke go away, I think that's them melding in one of the protostar insta hills to help smooth that transition off. So you'll see the puffs come up right about there. And the snowy, the protostar insta hill is blended in. Same way with over here, I think that's part of it. Um, you'll see some other bits as well in the back where it's kind of unfinished. But it has a, a very dark, not quite sinister look to it as well. Because again, with the coloring of the ominous sky, um, these stones here normally look a really bright purple, more colorful, like what we saw in the previous plot we just come from. Um, but here they look really black almost, um, like death stones. Um, but you can see uh, they've done a good job of Changing the elevations again. I think it's a lot of the uh, protostar insta hills being used for some of it. Um, I don't know what they're using here for this little platform. I don't know if it's an upside down uh, uh, Osun piece. 
Um, a lot of this I'm not going to be able to identify because I just don't use those pieces very frequently. But I can see like some reinforced walls. Um, there's uh, some Draken bits, I think. There's uh, maintenance platform pieces. Um, obsidian rocks for sure. Uh, these are those donut walls that we were talking about earlier. And uh, for the red, that's the Dominion scanners, I believe. <clears throat> but really good use of the water. Uh, I think this is another waterfall that's upside down to give that pool here. And again, Again, it's, I don't think it's meant to be like um, strictly shade ZV feel, but like with this crypt here, it just has that kind of a little bit of a tinge of it. Um, of course, in the pool here, they've got a crashed ship. Unfortunate fellow. Again, notice how they don't have just the obsidian stones. There are some swirly rocks in here, just little different changes. But you have uh, some structures here, and then you have um, a little bit here. I think this is more the living quarters, and this is more um, not offices or anything. Uh, this is where they have access to most of the uh, fab kits, I think. And of course, the main house is here. Again, uh, it's empty the last time I checked, so we'll take a look so you can see how it looks, though. You can see there's a little bit of the um, glacier pieces here. It doesn't look snowy or glaciery because of the coloring, but it's some nice um, way of framing the door. So again, you can see it's empty, but um, the sign kind of indicates it's probably going to be some kind of a bar type of theme inside. So it should be something fun to check out later. <clears throat> yeah, I think here is like a couple of large um, maintenance platforms for the roof and the floor. And got the Osun arch to kind of give it a little bit of uh, more dressed up entranceway and then of course layered glass for the walls. So inside here looks like a bit of a lab of some sort. Just some general elements. We've got one of the NPCs in a, a casing here. I think that's um, one of the landing pads, and then it's topped with a sewer entrance thing. They've even got some lighting inside it to kind of give it a little creepy look. Yeah, I don't think I could go inside, but it looks like they've got like an experiment going on. Again, he's strapped to the table with some hanging cables. Looks like they got a couple more subjects in the back uh, locked up, ready to be experimented on. So it's, uh, again, it's kind of like a labby, like Dr. Frankenstein feel. Like the Mortish are testing on other people to see about their stuff. And of course, up above is um, one of the ships that would bring you in. It's probably not the way to get to it, but this is how I'm getting to it. Uh, I don't know if the ship comes as is like this, or they added some elements to it. Um, I just think it's an interesting Again, when you're having these little builds, it helps to kind of indicate where people come in or go, that it isn't always just the teleporter that they're porting into. <clears throat> Excuse me. A 
Let's see, on this side of the bar, you have the little warning signs, and then you've got the Osun gate that you go through. And again, I said this is where you would get access to a lot of the fab kits that are already on the plot. Um, so you have the mining fab kit here. You've got the um, uh, crafting station fab kits. But I like how they've just kind of built this in around it. Uh, you even have this little water feature that's linked up to the, the mine area so that this is where they take those those ores and they use it on their anvil and stuff. So this is like the little black smithing area where they fashion the tools that come from the elements here. A lot of Osun bits. Um, they've got some boardwalk um, that they've added in for all of the walkways. Again, it's just one of those, you know, a lot of people use the fab kits that are functional, like the crafting one and the mining one. But um, I think a lot of folks have trouble blending them into their builds. And this is a great example of how they found ways to incorporate them in. I mean, here's like the biome one, and they just left it as part of the outside there. I'm not even sure if I can get to the outside there. Like here's a, a mining thing. If you use the sign, kind of block it in. This one's just got some glass, like almost like an elevator hatch or what have you. Here's another uh, fab kit, I think, in the biome. Again, they just found ways to kind of blend it in. And I love that. I see uh, Arctera frozen bits uh, even. And again, it almost doesn't look that way because it's so, the coloring is so different. Uh, that's a spooky window for that effect there. These are um, some of the, oh, it's like the spine. Um, throne thing, I forget the exact name of it. That's pretty creepy. But a good addition to this particular biome. But again, uh, it's it's hard to tell where the biome uh, fab kit ends and where the, the addition starts. But I know there's, it doesn't come entirely like this. I think that's, uh, was it Mulgrave biome fab kit, I think. Oops. I'm right past there. Here's the garden fab kit. And see how they even leave a little bit of window so you can see the biome one on the outside there. And then that leads to the hot springs on the other side. Notice how they almost make it look like it's part of the mining feature. They got one of the little bots there drilling away. I think this is part of the incomplete. They've got the little surgeon here just standing, waiting for, I don't know, his escape or something. There's a little bit of a pool here. Some of the Arctera bones, some of the um, frosty looking brambles and such. Then you get access to an upper level with the squid platform. Very quick way to add a spiral staircase if you're having trouble building one yourself. The Smoke pillar, I think, is one of the new um, effects from the cash shop. Here's the upper view of the garden. 
little spotlight for the hot springs. Again, sandstone, the gray stone, the obsidian stones. It's a good variety of rocks, but that all just kind of blends together. I don't think we're meant to go down inside this, but I'm going to check it out anyway. Oh, maybe so. Again, you can see there's like some unfinished. And if you come up here, uh, like on a lot of plots where they've tried to build a, a type of a scene from when you come in, that's what you see. But when you come around the edges and you start seeing all of the edge of the the plot itself and maybe it doesn't quite look as spiffy but you know there's just some things you can't cover up I know a lot of people have been arguing to get these little attachments on the sides to be removed one day maybe so that leaves us with um, this other part over here we're gonna come at it from the bridge Again, you can see some of the arc terra bones. And most of the house is uh, constructed of, I think it's um, draken uh, walls and uh, glass. But notice how they use the, the skull lights from the uh, Shades Eve. It doesn't really feel out of place to me, but you know, you never know when you might could use that stuff. And again, I don't think this is strictly a Shades Eve plot. It's just it has certain elements from it. Like you have the skeleton uh, Girok there. Even have the Shades Eve wreath. So going inside, um, again, you get a lot of the Arctera Osun feel. There's um, the platforms from it. Um, there's uh, some of the walls um, are reminiscent of that material. So we're just going to kind of go off on each side and check it out. This is the kind of like living room area where they have their big screen TV. I like how they just kind of simplified the speaker system. They even have like a little DVD thing going on. Maybe it's for games or something. Um, but they've had like this is an upside down uh Oh, airtight container, I think. And they've got it hooked up to the, I think that's a Shade Eve trap, the green one. The speakers are sunk down, so you just see the one bit. Kind of a simple way of making this little area the Two of pillars, the Draken wall, like little home entertainment system there. Uh, the stools, the little, looks like footstools almost. It's just the uh, the tiki stools and they're sit, sunk down so you don't see the, the big tall um, bits. It makes them fit a little better and you can still use them even when the legs are not showing. Um, over here we have uh, the bar which is using some of the new uh, red moon decor. You've got the lights, which they've added um, chains to to make it look like a nice little overhang for the island here. Um, the little couch that's built into the side here. I wouldn't want to lean back too much because there's some spikes where the head would go, um, but uh, it's just chua pillows for most of the couch. Um, the table that they're using, is one of those protostar um, uh, I don't know if it's a platform or uh, what what it's called and then it looks like either a cylinder or dome of some sort of the exile version for the bottom of it but it's an interesting little way of using that particular piece of course the uh, red moon bar stools there um, I wish they weren't stools, uh, then I would probably use them as handles and everything else, but I don't want the green showing up everywhere. Uh, but this part, the island itself, looks to be just an upside down um, 
reinforced wall. Um, it has those little bits sticking out. I remember that from my uh, subway station thing. So here we have the kitchen area and it's pretty elaborate with all what they have here. Um, there's like the, I guess it's the either water uh, dispenser, um, but this is like the microwave. So it's like a couple of um, airtight containers. There's a tablet computer for the door and then the controls are one of the magnetized containers uh, for the uh, stove top itself it looks to be some um, I don't know upside down hovering platforms to give those burner uh, kind of effect and then having all these tubes and things um, this part honestly I have no idea what that is but it looks like the same thing it looks like part of the platform and it's just it just looks like little controls for the oven it's a really clever use if that's what it is. I honestly don't know, but I suspect that it's a platform and just used for the different pots. Uh, the cutting board, it looks to be just a big two by four of some sort inserted there uh, where the little slot would be. And then you've got the refrigerated section, which again, it looks like they're using some of like the um, uh, Arctera decor for the ice and bits to make it look like it's nice and frozen. Added a little smoke effect to, again, kind of hint at it being a little cooler air inside there. And then, then you throw in all your meats and stuff. Looks like, yeah, the Osun head is the one that's being used as the, <coughs> the re actual refrigerator holder. Again, with the spotlights, they're adding chains to make it look like it's hanging. And then that's where they divvy up the meat. It's a very gloomy looking kitchen, but it works really good. I like a lot of the details on it. Um, for the overhang, that's again the, the maintenance platform. I think that's what's being used for most of the countertop here as well. And then reinforced walls for a lot of the big bulky part of it. Maintenance platform for this whole floor here, which leads way to the bar bar. Again, this is part of the Red Moon uh, terror decor, the hanging fan, the, uh, the emblem over here, the sigil. Um, the stools, even the rotating bar, but I like the little uh, biome bits back here that you can see. It's very colorful, all sorts of glowy um, space wheat and exonite plants, uh, some of the uh, bubbly plants from like the uh, spore frost spore stuff, the green spores from from Shades Eve. Here it looks like, um, I don't know if this is supposed to be like a sauna or it's like part of a bathroom of some sort, but again they're using a lot of the Osun bits. Um, the walls here are the pressure dividers and they just left it open a gap enough for a doorway. Um, this here is uh, that donut piece of um, obsidian stone, and then they just left a room for a pool using the older uh, waterfalls and the winding rivers. Interesting little bit. Let's see, I think we need to go on this side. Notice the little swing here, the little couch swing. It's just a ship hand seat, and then they've added chains to it. 
here's a better look at that little um, terrarium kind of thing. They even have a little buzz bing in there. Uh, the bookcase here, it might look a little different to you, but it's basically just the Dominion bookcase, but it's upside down. They've just got that pointed um, kind of pillar part underneath, so it looks, it just changes it up slightly. Still usable the way it is, so why not? Trying to see what they use for the table here. Kind of hard to tell. It looks like the bottom of a tree. What tree? I have no idea, but that's what it looks like. It looks kind of like a weird wooden bit being used as the table for that. For the fireplace, it's uh, basically just a couple of maintenance platforms and then just some enclosed glass using, uh, looks like one of the fire pits. And then they've thrown on some other uh, wood pieces like some of the thorny logs just beef it up a bit. And that there is one of the new um, pieces from Madame Faye, I think. The Roan Skull, I believe. This here looks like um, one of the uh, holographic bits and they've just turned it upside down and then they've added a plant so it looks like a planter. This, I'm not sure what that is. It could be uh, one of those hovering platforms. It could be maybe there's a, a welder that's stuck in there and that's given that animation. But it's very bright adds to the coloring, I guess. Get a nice little view of the outside here leads to that little pool that we saw, saw down from down below. One of the, uh, I think it's the, oh, what is it? One of the Elden pillars, I think. This has a more jungly kind of feel for the, uh, the little biome section. Another view for outside. Boardwalk pieces to lead up. So this is kind of like a garden you feel. Kind of like what the garden could be down below. But this is where they've actually grown it up. And this is just a variety of plants that they've thrown in here. Um, there's uh, the drooping gorge uh, fruit, there's some desert plants, um, orony plants. <clears throat> it's like a mishmash of different flowers and such. Could be just whatever the person had in their crate and said, I'm just going to dump it all in here and it just kind of works. Then we go up the stairs. And this is where it gets to feeling a little bit more empty, like there's room for things that they just haven't gotten to yet. Like I suspect there's going to be more coming out through here. This might be where they hang some special rewards or something that they got. Um, this, I think, is that uh, protostar platform that they're using, and then, of course, the Draken walls for the, all of the floors and everything. Here's a little uh, bedroom area. It's like you've got um, this little desk area, lots of clutter. You've got um, a little bit of plants that they're taking care of. You've got the seating area, very bright. And then up here, you have the sleeping area. There's like some pillows here, and then they've got a little hammock as well. Looks like several people could probably rest up in here. Again, lots of the chains, it almost feels while it says Mordash Solitude, it almost feels um, Marauder type as well. 
probably because of all of the Osin and Red Moon stuff that they've got scattered throughout. But all of the dark and the chains and everything just lends itself to that notion, I think. Oops. I think the last room is this one. I'm not even sure if there's anything in it. And there is. Yay. Let's close it up. This looks like the master bedroom. It has a nice little seating area. Again, the couches and the little sectional chair here. That's just two of pillows. Um, just shows you you don't even have to have wood and everything. You just throw the pillows together and it makes a really cute little furniture. Um, here, another example, this is the Winterfest fireplace in the midst of all of this, but it's, it just fits. It doesn't look out of place at all. Um, you know, I think some people get stuck on thinking that they can't mix and match the different themes of decor with each other. And this just goes to show, you know, there's some Draken elements. I've seen Orin elements. I've seen um, Chua elements. There's um just a complete mix of stuff uh, even um holiday bits you've seen shades eve now we see winterfest it all works together you know maybe not everything uh everywhere but it just gives you a clue like here this feels unfinished like it could be um, a little office space of some sort <clears throat> Look at this bed. I love the, it looks not quite like Dracula feel, but close. Um, but again, it's using the Draken uh, walls as the topper uh, with some of that Osun um, pillars for accent. Some of that Soul Frost goodies for, it's not quite like night lights, but you can see how they've got the medical bits. Again, it's supposed to be geared toward Mordash, so, you know, a lot of people associate having, uh, there's the coffin, um, having some kind of need for constant medical attention or monitoring of some kind. Um, but the bed itself is just a single to a pillow. How more simple can you get? But it works. It doesn't look too weird or anything. But yeah, I can see a lot of people getting into this, this kind of a theme, this dark, moody theme. And here we have, again, some type of a waterfall feature. Maybe it's being used for a bathroom thing. It's kind of creepy because you can see the one down below <laughs> through the water of this one but uh, I don't think I'd want to be taking a bath in here with someone down below looking up but there you go so that is Mordash Solitude by um, Nastya Kevakov Again, if we visit your homes and they're not quite complete, don't feel badly. Um, it's just normally I think it's too good to pass up. You don't want to wait because there have been instances where I've waited before and then the person just trashes everything that they have. And that's just a missed opportunity for you guys to see all of the nifty ideas that they've come up with um, that might inspire you to your own. So. When I come across a plot, if I really like um, what they've done or some of the ideas that they have incorporated, um, I don't really want to dally on it too long. Um, again, we have a, a huge list of houses that are incomplete, works of progress. Um, and I will give them a certain amount of time, but after a few weeks, if there's still no differences or changes that I've spotted, um, I'm going to go ahead and tour with what we've got. Um, before uh, they decide to just scrap it all because it's happened in the past and I regretted not checking it out before so I don't want to throw that in but if we do happen to visit your home and it was incomplete at the time and you've later come back and revamped it or added to it significantly or whatever just give me a poke I'm happy to retour um, uh, it's not a, a 
trouble or anything. It's not like once we visited your home, that's it. You know, you know, you're poop out of luck on it. No, um, I'm happy to retour if uh, you finish it or, you know, completely change it even. Um, I'm happy to do that. I think most people realize that, but I just want to say it again for those that might not be familiar with our little setup here. Um, so that's it for today, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the plots. I think there was a pretty good variety in styles. I mean, we went from the Skittles plot that had pastels out the wazoo to this dark and gloomy um, kind of, uh, not a sad home, but a very somber uh, kind of feel. Um, so you get you know, a little bit of the spectrum there. Um, really, when it comes to housing, whatever you can envision, you can probably throw out and build. It may take some work. It may take a lot of investment of time and plat and uh, just, you know, your sanity sometimes. But uh, if you stick with it, I think uh, you will be pleasantly surprised at just what all you can accomplish with housing. Um, and, you know, of course, that's what this stream is for, is to showcase um, the wonderful works that you guys create, uh, give you guys a little bit of a voice. Um, I might not reach the entire world, but for those that I do reach, I hope they appreciate uh, the work that you put into your homes. Um, I certainly do, and that's one of the reasons I started up the stream, was to give you guys um, some airtime uh, to... Uh, because, you know, a lot of our builders, while we do have some that regularly post in the forums to show off what they've done, uh, I think probably double that. Don't even um, say, hey, look at me, look at me, look at my plot. Um, a lot of them just quietly build, quietly go about their business, and um, they get missed. Their plots just get missed in the, in the mix. I mean, with the random visitor tool it it's helpful but um it's not reliable in the fact that everybody actually gets visited as often as they probably should so that's my effort to try and uh, bring attention to those that deserve it that have actually put in a lot of time and effort on their plot and um, get you guys out there to check it out in person if you can so um yeah, that's it for today. Um, tomorrow we'll be back um, to working on some of the goofy stuff that I've been putting together for the CBDC this month. We have the museum masterpieces theme going on. It's basically we're looking for sculptures or paintings that are 50 items or less. That is the one steadfast rule. They must stay within the 50 items or less. That includes, if you do a painting, that would include your framework. If you do a sculpture, if you're putting it on a pedestal of some kind, it would include that as well. So the entire project has to be 50 items or less. Um, if you want to find more details about that, there is a link in the housing section um, of the official forums. Um, just look for the November um, CBDC thread. It's pretty close to the top. Um, it'll give you full uh, details about why we're doing this particular theme. Basically, um, I'm working in conjunction with a fellow builder who has set up a museum plot. They're wanting some, uh, wanting to use their plot as a showcase for other builders. So they're inviting builders to submit um, projects to them. Um, for uh, consideration to be placed permanently on display in their museum. And uh, I got in touch with them and they have agreed to uh, take five of the entries, five of their most favorite entries that however many we end up getting by the end of the month, um, to place them into the museum. So uh, it's not typically a competition when it comes to these challenges. Usually we just do it for fun. But I thought this might be a helpful little extra incentive to get uh, some of you in involved and willing to participate, um, knowing that um, your works will live on forever in um, the museum uh, of the NA plot that has opened their doors up to that kind of a thing. Um, it's not every day people invite others to provide them with their work. So this is a chance for you to get some recognition, especially if you're on EU side. Um, having your work shown on the NA side would be kind of fun. So um, 
just something to think about. Uh, again, if you want to participate in the CBDC but don't want your work shared, um, just let me know. It's okay. Um, I'm happy to have you join in regardless. Um, the other is just an extra kind of a bonus uh, kind of thing to, if you want to look at it that way. And uh, uh, no problem, Cheeky. It was my pleasure. Uh, again, we hope that you finish it up, um, but um, I'm glad we got to see it um, even in the state that it is because all of them are awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, in the meantime, we will be working on my little projects if you want to come. We love, love to brainstorm. If you have questions, we'll be happy to answer those to the best of our ability. Um, and just want to hang out with us. That's perfectly acceptable and uh, welcome. Um, if you don't have an interest in that uh, and just want to do the house tours, we do this every Wednesday. We typically switch um, factions um, each week, so next week should be Dominion side. Um, but a, a reminder, I am looking for winter style plots. It doesn't have to be specifically winter fest, um, so you don't have to have a lot of protostar stuff on there if you don't want to. But we are looking for winter type plots, so if you just have an Arterra type plot or just a snowy type plot, that's acceptable. Um, uh, for the month of December, I'm hoping to do a lot of tours for those uh, next month. So uh, I've already got some in line, but if you know of any or have one yourself that you're working on, uh, please just give me a heads up and I will add you to the list. Um, until then, good luck with your projects, whatever they may be, and uh, have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.